it maybe just a little bit prettier. 2x root x, you could combine those with fractional exponents if you wanted to. What's on the denominator of this expression? On the denominator of this expression? On the denominator. There's a 2. There's for sure a 2 because of that 1 half. Do you see the 2? What else? Root x, because x to the negative 1, that says denominator, and then the 1 half says it's a square root. One plus x squared is on the numerator. Unless we want to get fancy and break that stuff up, find common denominators, we're just about done with that problem. How many people feel okay with this one? Can we convert the square roots to fractions and then solve that? Sure, we can do that as well. Uh, you'd have to distribute, from here you'd probably distribute that. You'd have uh, one half x to the negative one half here, and you'd have uh, plus one half x to the three halves. And then you would combine that with your other fractions over there because you've got two uh, Yeah, we could do that. We could try that. So this is 2x2, let's see, 1 plus a half is 3, three halves. halves. Then plus, if we distribute, you'll get 1 half x to the negative 1 half plus 1 half x to the 3, three halves. halves. And we're getting that because, of course, when you multiply those exponents, you add them. You add those exponents together. That's the 3 halves for you. So I've just distributed and distribute it. One half x to the negative one half, and then one half, the x squared and the x to the negative one half gives you x to the three halves. Are you all right with that? Yeah. Then, sure, you could combine these as well. So you'd end up with like five, like five halves over x to the three halves. Yeah, five halves, x to the three halves, plus one half, x to the negative one half. If you want to leave it in terms of of exponents, that's probably what you would end up with, is those exponents just like that. And that's an acceptable way? That's actually exactly what you'd get if you distributed this and then took the derivative. If you, I'll just do it in your head if you want to. Think <coughs> about it. If you distribute this, you're going to get root x, right? Square root of x, the derivative of that is this right there. You see it? The derivative of this is this one. You follow? Distribute this, this is going to be x to the 5 halves. <coughs> see the 5 halves out of that? x to the 5... 1 half plus 2. x to the 1 half plus x to the 5 halves. That's what that is distributed. Uh, if you can't get that, do it later on your own. Distribute that and, and figure out those exponents. This derivative is that piece right there. The piece of this derivative is 5 halves x to the 3 halves. It's right there. It's the same thing. Same exact thing. Feel okay with this so far? All right, cool. Let me show you one more, and this kind of this really illustrates the idea of the product rule, and see if you can you can do it in general. Kind of a fun little problem, almost, almost like a little puzzle. Not a hard puzzle, don't worry. This one time, my parents, I love my parents to death, but they gave me this one puzzle. It was. Uh, have you ever done a puzzle that doesn't have straight edges? Very difficult. It was shaped like a butterfly, right? And instead of having like normal butterfly, it was like a psychedelic butterfly, like, what do you call it stuff? Um, was it? Tie-dye? Yeah, it was a tie-dye butterfly. With non-straight edges and a non-straight outline, I spent at least 18 hours doing it and then ended up burning in the fire blaze. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Maybe, so. It's not a puzzle like that, okay? This is like one of those four-piece jigsaw puzzles you get in like third grade, okay? Or, or, or no, maybe kindergarten. Ooh, puzzles, okay? You got it. Fun. It's not yeah, like a double-sided puzzle? It's not a double-sided puzzle. I don't know if I need it. Different pictures on what different picture on each side? Oh man, that'd be ridiculous. <laughs> not one of those either. No, it's this puzzle. <coughs> you see, before you could have gotten around this problem without without doing the product rule. You could have gotten around this problem. This one, well, you, you might still be able to, to do that. However, it's going to be a little bit easier if you, if you do the product rule, rule with it. The idea is, what if you have this, and I tell you only two things about it. I say f of 2 is 3. f prime of 2 is negative 1. 
and I say find g prime of 2. That's my goal. Not, not too bad. What we're going to have to do, though, is figure out some pieces to fill in. We want to find the first derivative of g and then fill in the 2. Do you follow me on this? So let's go ahead. Let's use the product rule. Firstly, do you see why we need the product rule here? Do you see it? Do you see why? Do you have a function in terms of x times a function in terms of x? This is a function of x, yes? This is another function of x, and they're being multiplied. That's definitely the product rule. So what I'd like you to do, just follow the product rule with this. Go ahead and do that now. Follow the product rule. I want you to find g prime of x. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Just write it out. Derivative of the first times the second. Yes? Plus, plus. The first times the derivative of the second. If you want to use ddx, you can. Would you agree that that is, in fact, the product rule for this problem? Derivative of the first, yep, times the second, okay, plus the first, got it, times the derivative of the second. I don't care that the, the function is not listed, it's f of x, so whatever that happens to be, that's what would go here and that's what would go here, just like in our other examples. You, you with me on that? Well, let's do the derivative where we can. Give me the derivative of x squared plus 1. So this is 2x times f of x. True? Plus, do you take the derivative of that? x squared plus 1 still needs to be in parentheses, ladies and gentlemen, times, what's the derivative of f of x? Aha, uh -huh, f prime of x is how you write that. We don't have the actual function, but you know that f prime of x stands for the derivative of f of x. Do you see that? Okay, cool. Now this, would you agree, is g prime of x? That's the derivative of g. That's what that is. What we want to find out is g prime of 2. What does g prime of 2 tell you to do? Everywhere you see x, plug in 2. Everywhere you see x, plug in 2. Everywhere. So for us, that means tell me what I should have. 2 times 2. Great, because x is 2. Fantastic. Uh, times f of what? Two. That's everywhere you see the x, correct? Yeah. Okay. F of 2. Plus, in the parentheses, tell me what else I got. Times F prime of what? Sure. Hey, what happened to all the x's? They became 2's. This x became 2, therefore every other x became a 2. Raise your hand feel like that so far. So it's kind of just a little exercise so you get used to the product rule and then filling out the, the numbers with the substitution. Let's go just a little bit further. There's no more x's. We can now make some substitutions. I know that this is 2 times 2, so that is 4 times, hey, what is f of 2? Have I given you that information? 3. 4 times 3. Plus this is all 5. 5 times what's f prime of 2? Cool. Is it possible? Sure. Yeah, yeah. They have to give you this, though. They have to tell you what that is. I wouldn't be able to do this without that specific information. <coughs> so all together, we're going to get... Seven. Cool. Seven. Yeah, super fun. See, puzzle. I told you to enjoy it. Ha, ha, ha. Puzzling why I find that interesting. But uh, what did we just find? G prime of 2, yes, that's the exactly what we did find. What's it represent? Slope of this curve 
at that x value. So what you just found, this is actually a slope. The slope would be 7 of that curve, whatever it is, at x equals 2. You see that? Kind of neat. We're finding slope. Always keep that in mind. What you're doing is you're finding slope and you're finding slope. I still don't know what f of x is. Nope. No, you might be able to figure it out. Or at least something that represents it, but no, we don't know. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, are you okay with the product rule? In general, it's really not that hard of a rule. You, if, if you have this down, that's it. It lets you break up a problem without doing distribution so that you can do it piece by piece, and that's the idea. Now we're going to look at the quotient rule. Quotient rule is just slightly more involved, but it's not that hard either. It's, a, it's again, it's just a product, it's, it's very similar to the product rule. Same idea. You ready to see it? Yes. The proof, again, is in your book. It's not hard to follow. Go ahead and just look at that when you get home tonight. Okay, so, quotient rule, quotient rule asks this question, it says, can you take a derivative of a quotient? Something in terms of x over something in terms of x. That's what this, this question is asking. And, and the idea is, well, can I just take the derivative of f and divide by the derivative of g? Do you think that's going to work? No, that, that, that never works. We can't separate <coughs> derivatives by multiplication unless you use the product rule. We can't separate derivatives by division unless you use the quotient rule. Are you with me on that? You can't just take a derivative of the top and the bottom. That's never going to work for you. I give you a very simple example about how that's never going to work for you. If you did that, you'd get something over zero, true? Yet we know that this would be the same thing as one-third x squared minus one-third, true? Derivative would be very easy there, two-thirds x, and that's it. So we can't just take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. That doesn't work for us. We have to have some other way to do it. By the way, you probably wouldn't, you could, but you probably wouldn't want to use a quotient rule for this very simple example. You'd probably break it up, just like I did here, and then you'd take a very easy derivative. The quotient rule and the product rule are really meant for some more extensive ideas, things where you, you don't have other ways to do it. That, that's really the, the benefit of these rules. So I'll show you what the quotient rule says. Quotient rule says, okay, in order to take the derivative of a quotient, we're going to take some derivatives of each piece, but we're going to put them together in a unique way, just like we do with the product rule. It says you're going to take the bottom function times the derivative of the top function. I'm going to use some logic that's not quite mathematical, but it's going to make you, under, make you remember something. Uh, product meant plus, right? P with P. Product meant plus. What's the opposite of a product? A quotient. What's the opposite of a plus? A minus. So what are you going to use here? A plus or a minus? Minus. Okay, it's not very mathematical, but that's the way you remember it, okay? Product with plus. Quotient. I think quotient has a straight line, so quotient has another straight line. Quotient minus. That's how I remember it. Actually, I remember it because I've done this so many times, I can't forget it. <laughs> it's stuck in my head like jingle bells. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I have a song for that too. Um, any <laughs> the math song for Jingle Bells? Just watch my videos, you'll see it. Quadratic formula song, that's right. So the low function times the derivative of the high function minus the, what would I do? High 